think we're going to take a long time in this meeting, honorable members, because from early in the morning, honorable members have been in the meeting, but we are not <coughs> going to take the shortcuts. We are going to receive the presentation and interrogate it. And then after that, the department will answer. After that, uh, if there is a follow up, we'll continue to ask questions because we, under, we want to know to understand the mandate of the research council, what they are doing. And we want to know the relationship between them and the department. Uh, and we want to know how are they helping the various in the country. That's what we are uh, going to receive today. I'm not going to waste any time like uh, Deputy Minister told us that he is in between the two meetings. I'm going to give him a chance to say something before I can give to the department and the council to present to us. Uh, Deputy Minister Squasham. Good afternoon, Chairperson. Good afternoon to everybody including those that are sorting out their hair on the screen there from the EFF. You know. <laughs> Did that as it may, Chairperson, I really want to say that really I live between, and as you can hear the, the echo on the other side, the Minister of Finance is talking on the other side. You know. So I really want to say that uh, we are happy to be here in this meeting, and uh, we have come as requested for a briefing both by the Agricultural Research Council and the Understep World Biological Products Facility on their Monday activities, after which the, the members of the committee would be allowed to engage with us. Be that as it may, I think I should give over immediately to the TG. And please don't be surprised when I have quietly disappeared, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Over to you, Tegu. Did Chairperson, thank you very much. I think the, the, the Deputy Minister has done the opening. The two CEOs uh, of the entities, uh, Dr. Moibori is here and uh, uh, Betty uh, Dungu uh, are both here. So they are leading the presentation. Thank you very much. CEOs, when you present, you must uh, introduce your team. CEOs. Uh, good afternoon, honorable members. Uh, good afternoon, Deputy Minister and DG and uh, my colleagues. My name, my name is Shadrach Moepudi. I'm the CEO of the Agriculture Research Council. Um, we have put together a, a presentation that represents all the various business divisions of research and development and technology transfer of the Agriculture Research Council. Uh, uh, together with the CEO, uh, the presentation will be also be made uh, uh, the same presentation by the technical expert, which, will be, which is Dr. Mohele Mueleti, uh, who is also with uh, Dr. Maila. These are coming from the units that deal with soil, climate, and um, and, and and water. So I will start with the um, with the presentation, in particular with a particular focus on, um, on, on the key areas uh, um, that actually must happen. Um, we have going to try and uh, get the presentation that represents all the various business uh, just now of research and development and the transfer of the agricultural research. Um, I'm not sure. Can you see the presentation? Together with the CEO. Yes. Uh, Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I will try and be fairly brief, but I'll try and deal with the early parts and the introductory parts of the presentation. 
then my colleague Dr. Mueletzi will then proceed with the rest of the uh, presentation. What we've done is that we've tried to demonstrate that the work that we do, first of all, is within the, is within the context of the mandate of the Agricultural Research Council. Um, and secondly, uh, the work we do is uh, at all times aligned with our five-year strategic plan uh, and our current five-year strategic plan, which is the one for the current sixth administration, uh, is a strategic plan that is aligned with the strategic plan, with the strategic plan of the department, and obviously with the uh, uh, MTSF uh, outcomes. Um, so, in terms of outcome one, part of our focus in terms of these particular the, the subject of today is around the focus on. Uh, crops with improved uh, characteristics and making sure that these uh, uh, are adaptable and responsive to the impacts of climate change and, and climate variability. A, a particular focus on sustainable ecosystems and natural resources. Part of our mandate in the act of the Agricultural Research Council is to ensure conservation and sustainable use of natural resources. So naturally, as an organization, we tend to make sure that there is work that we always do that contributes towards conservation and sustainable use of, uh, of natural resources. That includes some of the key issues in the outcomes around developing or working towards the development of low carbon technologies, uh, in terms of, a, we can't do this work without ensuring that uh, the relevant technologies and solutions that we develop, uh, we are able to disseminate and are delivered out there in the context of technology transfer as part and parcel of the work that we would do. Um, obviously, uh, the intended outcome overall in terms in respects of climate change and, 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 and climate variability is around making sure that whatever we do as the ARC, we contribute towards making agriculture resilient to the adverse impact of climate change. That actually also involves working towards the development of those types of solutions that could be utilized out there that enable climate uh, 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 resilience for, for, for the sector. So briefly, uh, these are the areas for which we are fairly uh, active in terms of climate monitoring. We have about a thousand uh, uh, weather stations scattered around the country. I'll just briefly show you a brief map of them. Probably the largest set of climate monitoring stations of any institutions in the country. Um, we use them for remote sensing, sensing to monitor changes in climate. Uh, in terms of climate variability research, but they don't contribute much. I mean, it's, it's yeah. just somebody who could contribute. In terms of climate variability research, we look at the effects of climate variability on a day-to-day -day basis, on a month-to-month -month basis on agriculture and how that affects agriculture. Uh, but also we look at the extreme weather mitigation uh, aspects uh, to try and develop early warning systems and surveillance systems. Um, and of course, we look at also trying to find ways of uh, developing ways of adaptation, targeting climate change res resilience in the agriculture sector. Uh, as you all, you probably all know, one of the challenges that uh, the world is now facing is around issues around green greenhouse gas emissions, uh, and also trying to also work towards how is it that from the agriculture perspective, can we quantify greenhouse gas emissions, understanding this, and seeing how this actually has any specific effect on agriculture or how agriculture contributes to greenhouse gas emissions and effectively how can we advise uh, on how that could be uh, re reduced as a mitigation um, uh, strategy. Uh, of course, as an institution developing these uh, information and the scientific know-how actually requires or expects of us to also develop the necessary skills and capability and the knowledge both internally in the organization but also in the sector including uh, providing some of that those advisories uh, to policymakers including in government we also provide support mainly through the department of environment forestry and fisheries uh, particularly in terms of south africa's commitments in terms of the united nations 
uh, uh, UNCCD uh, and other protocols uh, for which South Africa is a, 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 a signatory. The next slide essentially is just a, a pictorial that shows you the spread of the various weather stations that we talk about. So the, the picture that you see there is the type of weather stations that we have. Uh, the one that you've seen there is, is not especially specifically fixed. It can be moved at any particular point in time, but uh, most of them are actually fixed. We have them on farmer's fields. We have them in some schools and some of the public facilities that belong to uh, various uh, parts of, of government. They do need to be protected, otherwise they become vandalized. They are an expensive network because it also requires that we have a set of technicians that must travel around the country to service this particular network of, um, of weather stations. They do transmit the data directly uh, to the ARC research station, the main research station in soil, climate and water um, regularly through, um, uh, and through a, G a GSM network, basically through cell phone uh, net network uh, a a system. And we use that particular data for part and parcel of uh, our research. Uh, of course, uh, we cannot just simply do the work uh, without actually making sure that we provide the necessary advisories. Um, we, pro we collect the data uh, on vegetation uh, in order for us to be able to provide the advisories around the, the condition of the vegetation and the climatic conditions. Um, we provide the data to farmers, we provide the, the data to commodity organization, we also provide the data to national government and provincial governments, as well as the National uh, Disaster Management Center, uh, in order for them to be able to take the necessary decisions. Um, part of that is around monitoring fires, uh, but also part of that is around for them to be able to have a sense as to the likely implication of the drought or the likely impact of the changes in the weather patterns and how that could affect um, society and the, and the agriculture sector. On a quarterly basis, we have a newsletter that we call Umlindi, uh, which is uh, fairly detailed. Uh, it's not very technical, but it's detailed enough for anyone who receives it to actually read it and understand what might be happening um, essentially in South Africa. Uh, in, within a particular province of, of South Africa. This is uh, data that is compiled not only by the ARC alone, it is data that is also compiled with the analysis that's coming both from the Agricultural Research Council, but also as well as the uh, South African uh, Weather Service, which we work with fairly closely. Um, and it is a quarterly newsletter that we share uh, with all stakeholder, stakeholders. We also have it on our, on our internet for anyone to download at any point in time if they so wish to receive that particular um, a, a, a newsletter. At this stage, I would like to uh, request Dr. Mueleti, uh, our research, research technology manager at the Agriculture Research Council, to give the rest of the presentation because uh, it's fairly technical. He would then be able to explain how he's been able to compile the inputs from the rest of the business uh, of the Agriculture Research Council. Dr. Mueletsi, over to you. I'll just move the slides. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, CEO. Uh, good afternoon, uh, honorable members. Um, I'll, I'll start with uh, uh, the work that we do under um, uh, climate adaptation. Uh, this is the kind of work that we have been doing um, uh, in the past, uh, uh, prior to uh, uh, the, the signing of the, um, the Paris Agreement. Uh, we have been doing a lot of work under uh, climate adaptation, and later on, we have actually shifted to, to also do uh, uh, some work on, on climate mitigation. Um, I'll, I'll run through some of the uh, flagship projects that uh, the organization has uh, actually undertaken uh, for a number of years. Uh, the first one is actually on uh, uh, climate suitability. Uh, what we have done in this um, uh, project, we, we looked at uh, 
the maize um, um, uh, productive areas are they shifting and with time as you can see uh, on the on the right we have a, a, a picture showing um, a suitability of maize in 2018 in 2030 2060 up until 2090 uh, using uh, climate projections and also um, um, uh, data on soil and uh, uh, requirements of the, of the maize crop. Uh, we, we, we see that uh, the maize crop is actually uh, suitability is decreasing with time and thus there's a need for, uh, for us to work on uh, improving the cultivars that we have currently. Um, the, the, the picture on, on um, below that is actually shows the work that we have done uh, in uh, quantifying uh, severity of drought over South Africa. As you can see, uh, uh, we started this work in 1960 up until 2010, and we looked at the frequency of, of, of drought uh, in those years. And um, uh, uh, towards the latter part, uh, 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 you can see that the frequency of drought, uh, which is shown by the spikes in red, uh, has been increasing with time. And uh, also the projection uh, going forward shows that uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of uh, high frequency in terms of drought and also in terms of intensity. Thank you. Next slide. We, we have also worked, uh, we are also working uh, a lot with uh, other partners uh, uh, to develop uh, drought uh, resistant um, uh, cultivars. Uh, in the past uh, uh, five years, we have uh, also um, developed uh, uh, cultivars that are um, uh, uh, very resistant and also uh, can actually tackle issues of uh, armyworm. And uh, these uh, uh, cultivars are, are actually um, um, accessible to small-scale farmers, and they, they actually uh, help them improve uh, productivity. And this work is done in collaboration with the public sector, whereby uh, the sale of these uh, cultivars is, is made available. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, over and above that, uh, as an organization, we are working on uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, wheat uh, uh, drought tolerant uh, cultivars as well. That aims at actually uh, increasing um, uh, productivity, um, uh, especially during um, uh, these times where the drought uh, intensity is very high and also uh, looking at uh, uh, tolerance to uh, new diseases and, um, and also um, uh, looking at uh, uh, productivity in terms of shifting, where can we actually uh, push in uh, this uh, wheat production in, in other areas where uh, productivity has not been taking place. Next slide. There's been a lot of work as well uh, uh, on tropical and subtropical crops uh, in terms of improving um, uh, uh, cultivars and also development of uh, suitable uh, rootstocks as well as uh, orchard management to ensure that uh, uh, the agricultural sector actually cope with uh, uh, climate change. Next slide. We are also working uh, quite a lot uh, in, in actually improving uh, vegetables cultivars. Uh, in, in this particular project, uh, we, 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 are, we are actually working on potato, improving uh, productivity of, of potato, and also looking at uh, issues of yield stability, uh, drought tolerance, and uh, also heat tolerance, as well as um, uh, resistance as well to, to pests and diseases. Um, there has been a lot of work done uh, under the potato uh, breeding program in uh, collaboration with uh, Potato SA and also other stakeholders in, in the country. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, regarding livestock uh, 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 product, uh, uh, pro production, the uh, uh, Animal Productive uh, Production Institute has actually worked on uh, a number of issues related to, to climate change, uh, including how can uh, the uh, livestock actually reduce uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. As we know that uh, uh, 
uh, enteric fermentation as well as manure management are, are the major, major uh, greenhouse gas emissions um, uh, sources in, in the agricultural sector. Um, the organization has been looking at how can we uh, actually reduce the carbon footprint from uh, agricultural, pro uh, and, uh, agricultural production, uh, mainly looking at livestock and, and cattle, and uh, especially cattle and sheep. And there is also um, a lot of work that has been uh, uh, taking place, looking at the fertility as well of, uh, of different uh, uh, livestock uh, uh, cattle species, uh, especially in the light of increasing temperatures and trying to see uh, what is the an effective way in which uh, we can actually improve our, uh, our, uh, our fertility uh, to ensure that uh, production, animal production is, is, is enhanced. Thank you. Uh, in the next com uh, coming slides, we look at uh, issues of uh, mitigation. Uh, how can we reduce uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions from, from agricultural sector and some of the projects uh, related to uh, early, early warning systems? Um, we, we, we are uh, working a lot in terms of uh, uh, developing early warning systems as well as surveillance. Uh, in, this, in this case, we, 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 we have um, a flagship project uh, uh, which actually um, um, uh, traces wheat rust diseases uh, um, in the country and also report those and uh, looking at uh, the, the development of, of, of these particular uh, uh, diseases. As you can see uh, in the map there, uh, looking at uh, some of the cases that we have actually found, there's, there's been a lot of incidences in the Western Cape as well as some incidences in the, in the Free State as well as the, 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 KwaZulu, uh, the KwaZulu Natal. Thank you. The next slide actually shows the, the work that we are doing uh, in terms of developing uh, um, an early warning system for Rift Valley fever. Uh, and this actually um, is, 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 has actually shown uh, uh, a high level accuracy, whereby 70% uh, of uh, the incidences have been actually been um, uh, picked by this uh, early warning system. Uh, this system is, is actually in, in, in uh, in progress, and we, we, we believe that it's going to be uh, uh, finalized in the next uh, year or two, whereby we, we can actually, uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a regular basis or online, uh, get uh, um, uh, warnings on, 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 on Rift Valley uh, uh, for, 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 for all the, the regions in the, in the country. We, we, we also, um, we also partnered uh, with uh, a number of institutions uh, in South Africa. It was uh, a South African Weather Se Service, and uh, uh, whereby we, we developed uh, uh, an early warning of some sort application uh, for, for planting of maize as well as uh, uh, spraying. Uh, this application is actually um, um, available uh, on Android. Uh, one can actually uh, uh, determine the, the, the the risk in which uh, um, uh, onset of rainfall uh, is is is, uh, is at this particular place, uh, uh, and uh, he can actually utilize that to determine the right planting date of of, of maize in, in in this particular uh, area. Uh, this application is, is is actually has been actually being um, adopted by by a number of farmers, and uh, uh, we are we are actually in the process of actually uh, including a lot of. Uh, um, uh, uh, services as well, over and above the maize one that we that we had. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, the, the coming slides will basically look at uh, issues of uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions, the kind of work that we are doing in terms of uh, quantification of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we we have been uh, uh, key partners of uh, Department of Environment, uh, Forestry, and, and Fisheries. In terms of uh, uh, trying to, uh, to 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 get good estimates uh, of uh, the emissions that comes out of uh, the agricultural sector, in a number of years we have actually uh, quantified um, um, uh, emissions from from all the agricultural sector, 
in order actually to, to, to improve uh, the estimates uh, and also uh, feeding into the uh, policy making uh, for, for, for the department. And uh, the, 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 the coming slides will actually show one or two uh, processes that we are doing in terms of mitigation. We, we have been involved in uh, uh, a number of projects looking at how can we reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions from, from agricultural sector. The first one is looking at uh, small scale biogas uh, digesters at, at farm level. How can, this, uh, how can we integrate this uh, uh, um, uh, technology with, uh, uh, with a, a crop livestock system, whereby we have a, 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 a crop livestock energy system, uh, whereby the, 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 the output from, from the livestock is actually fed into, uh, into the biogas, uh, producing energy for the household. And also the bio slurry out of uh, the, the the biogas is is used as as a as a organic fertilizer to 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 to, to, to the to, to to the variety of gardens and does uh, improve improving um, uh, uh, productivity and also enhancing uh, food security uh, within the, the household as well as nutritional nutritional security. Um, we we have also worked a lot uh, as uh, we, uh, under the um, the engineering department uh, to the the the, the uh, appliances that that have been used for conventional tillage uh, to actually to uh, reduce tillage in an effort to to to, to actually uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions that comes from uh, a, a plowing of of fields. Uh, this work is still ongoing and uh, there there are a lot of um, uh, the work that that has that has been put in place, and uh, uh, thinking that we, we in the future we'll have uh, uh, our own South African uh, no-till uh, uh, plant uh, in the in the market. A number of institutions are also uh, working on conservation agriculture, whereby we are promoting uh, no-till or minimum tillage, uh, and also the use of multiple cropping system as well as uh, permanent soil cover. This uh, uh, kind of uh, um, planting is, is encouraged uh, uh, as an adaptation as well as a mitigation. Um, um, uh, uh, because of its adaptation and its mitigation potential, uh, it also uh, have a high climate adaptability and uh, it actually improve, improve uh, household food security as, as well as also um, uh, improve household income in terms of uh, the yields that we that are obtained uh, under this kind of system. And uh, we we are also uh, have been involved in uh, uh, capacity building uh, in terms of uh, uh, both uh, uh, farmers as well as uh, uh, extension service. Uh, uh, in the past year, we have. Uh, actually uh, trained over 100 extension uh, practitioners in issues of climate smart agriculture uh, in an offer to actually uh, teach them on uh, agrometrology and natural uh, resource management. Uh, how can they uh, utilize climate in terms of coping and also uh, mitiga mitigation as well uh, uh, in the light of uh, them helping uh, the farmers that are under their, under their, the, 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 their territory and also we, we, we have been uh, uh, helping them with issues of uh, climate smart animal production as well as climate smart uh, crop production. Uh, and uh, lastly, we... So in conclusion, uh, as you have seen that uh, climate solutions uh, for agricultural sector is, is actually key for a multiple, uh, multiple uh, UN development goals. And uh, uh, it is also key to monitor uh, climate uh, on a continual basis and thus uh, support for, for climate monitoring uh, stations is actually key. And also continuation of uh, climate change uh, uh, in agriculture is, is also key for, so for the sector to actually cope with climate uh, variability and change. There's also a need for, for, for us to develop uh, a mitigation, new mitigation solutions for, that are tailored for South Africa and also um, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a need for uh, collaboration between policy makers and also researchers so that the, the, uh, the policy is actually more uh, uh, aligned to uh, the research outputs that uh, come from the, the research councils. Well, thank you very much.
you, Doctor. Thank you, Chair. That is the presentation that we uh, had prepared. We are ready to engage uh, with any further details on this particular presentation to respond to any particular questions. Uh, okay. The three of us, Dr. Myla. Now I'm going to start with uh, honorable members to interrogate the presentation. Uh, I'll start with Honorable Smith and Honorable Mokause and Honorable Bibi and Honorable uh, Tlute and yeah. Don't forget me, Chip. I did call Don't you. Don't forget about me, Che. Oh, Honorable Arnold. Honorable Smith, Honorable Arnold, Honorable Bibi, Honorable Lute, and then Honorable Mokause, Honorable Nguenya, Honorable Stekes. Hey, <laughs> I was trying to call your name in full. No, you can't pronounce it. Uh, just leave it as it is. <laughs> yes. So let's start, Honorable uh, Smith. Uh, I'll say uh, to Honorable Matibe Nda Di Masiare. Bovoabut. Um, thank you, Chair. Hello. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Honourable Chair, I would like to know, um, in terms of, um, you know, the covert impact and, and obviously a reduction on, on budgets and the restraint on budget, uh, what uh, impact uh, does it have uh, on the work that uh, the Research Council is doing? Um, and before uh, the actual uh, lockdown and the restrict uh, or uh, a reduction in budget, um, was the funding uh, sufficient uh, for the research council to uh, effect the mandate? Um, the second uh, question I have, honourable chair, is in terms of the research that's done on climate change and the patterns, uh, obviously, you know, in terms of rain and drought and all of that, uh, how does that flow into um, the proactive planning uh, of the department as well as the department of water and sanitation to provide or to foresee uh, that uh, there's enough water, especially for, for the agricultural sector, uh, because we know that the agricultural sector is highly dependent on, on quite uh, big volumes of water. So, uh, you know, predicting the necessity for, for other solutions, uh, um, um, like uh, un, uh, one of them obviously being um, expanding on the on the size of our dams um, and then capitalizing on water uh, flow before it uh, flows the fresh water flow before it flows into the sea um, uh, uh, to use that uh, for for agricultural as well as domestic uh, purposes uh, so so how does that planning actually flow through uh, to, to initiate planning because we, we're sitting in a crisis already and obviously uh, with climate change getting worse by by the year, by the day for that matter, um, you know, um, how uh, will that further impact uh, going forward? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable. Uh, now it's Honorable Arnold. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and uh, also thank you for the presentation. Uh, Chairperson, yes. Uh, let me just ask uh, the first question in terms of the early warnings to reduce pest uh, damage, your surveillance in terms of the research uh, council surveillance and, and early warning systems. 
Now, my question is that the tracing and the screening of diseases that has the potential now to come into the country, uh, to enter the country, can you, uh, I think we need to get more information in terms of that now, uh, and what kind of uh, tracing and screening um, uh, was now in terms of your research uh, has come out um, in terms of that. Then uh, the other question that I want to raise now, uh, and we hope that the department is ready to, to deal with the impact of climate change uh, in, in, in the country as a whole. But in terms of the weather stations network, uh, we just want um, information in, in terms of is all the, the, the weather stations in a working conditions in terms of uh, the functioning and everything like that. I think we also need just in terms of um, uh, the, the other question that I want to ask uh, the heat stress and impact on, on livestock as a result of climate change. Uh, I think we have a, a real threat uh, and we need to to more detail in terms of the research. And, the, and, and as we all know that uh, the evidence is clear that small older and subsistence Dry land farmers are more vulnerable to climate change than commercial farmers because commercial farmers have all the resources. Uh, and I think that will also guide the department in terms of more support uh, for, for those uh, farmers uh, in terms of the research and, and, and the information and the knowledge uh, that will be obtained from that. Thanks, uh, Chairperson, for now. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Arnold. Now it's Honorable Pete, and then we'll follow by Honorable Itumele Nzube. Hi, oh, baby. Oh, Number three. Oh, oh it's right. Honorable Bibi, and okay. Mamuka Usa, and Honorable Laboskakni, and Honorable Itumele Mangwe. <laughs> okay. No, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, we welcome the, the presentation. Um, I've only have got two questions. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, the OBP is the national key point. Uh, my question on that would be, I just want to check with the department whether the OBP has ever received funding uh, from the department to upgrade and modernize its facilities and also to assist the small holder farmers in order to mitigate uh, the impact of climate change. Um, question number two will be, <coughs> um, this question goes to both AFC and also OBP. Uh, can we have an update on whether the provincial department and municipality are still sourcing their vaccines uh, from private companies? I uh, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Bibi. Now it's Honorable Flute. I think we should all Honorable agree. Flute. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Honorable Flute. Chairperson, I'm here. I don't yes. know whether you can hear me. I'm audible I now. I can hear you, sir. Thank you yes. very much. So at, at one stage, the Agriculture Research um, Council was a, a, a leader in research, not just in South Africa, but worldwide. And I'm sorry to say this might be a point of debate, but it's not the case anymore. Um, I would like to know from my first question is, does the ANC or pardon the ARC have a, a strategy to become that world leader again? Um, because we, are, we have seen some numerous issues uh, past, over the past five years. More recently, uh, the, the availability of vaccines in, in South Africa. And part of that connecting to that is 
the fact, I think, that in 2005, the, uh, the, the ARC cancelled to produce uh, vaccines, especially in South Africa. Now, 400 million rand has been budgeted for the uh, vaccine factory. I would just like to know also what's the current status of that factory and the uh, the project manager for that uh, factory has it been has he been he or she been appointed yet? There's also been issues relating to uh, retrenchments at the at the ARC. I would like to know what the status of that retrenchments are. It's about a thousand people that could be retren retrenched. And then, lastly, on the on the issue of of um, let's say uh, pollution, especially pollution. Now, we, if we have a look at climate change, we speak about the climate and the environment, we know it's a very sensitive system we work with. And especially for water, we're going to see, if we continue like we continue, we're going to see uh, real issues relating to the availability of water. I think we all know that. But my concern is whether the department is able to have a look at the, some of the real issues that, uh, that actually pollutes our water systems. Now, in my mind, also a matter of debate, but I'm willing to, to challenge that. Municipalities are actually contributing to water pollution. My question would be, whether the, the ARC would actually start with research, could be a good case study to, to find, the, to see the effect of the inability of municipalities to effectively manage their sewage. Now, let me give you an example about this. I was in much Bay recently in the Free State in Virginia, and the water there, the, the sewage actually there, flows into the Sand River. Now, Honorable Bayer spoke about the water and, and agriculture. That sewage that flows into the Sand River ultimately flows into the agricultural water systems. I think it would be a good case study for the, for the uh, ARC to just maybe look into that. That would be a nice research study. The... And, and see what the municipality's inability to manage the sewage systems that ultimately flows in our water systems, how it affects our agricultural um, productivity. It's my questions. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. We want to get another presentation. Let's just all be uh, honorable solo. Mam Kause? No question. Chairperson, um, oh. thank you so much. I'm partly covered by my colleague, uh, Honorable Arnold. But what I want to understand is that um, um, do they have some sort of a uh, uh, does the institution have some sort of a relationship between themselves and the Department of Health? Do they have some sort of a coordinating structure where they collate and coordinate information, share information um, before even a disaster strikes? Or are they able to sit somewhere and advise one another in terms of Winter is coming, summer is coming, now here are the possibilities. And also, out of that for us, if there's any, is there any result yet that, that, that will be all for now, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Mkause. Honorable Lagoskakni. No question. No questions. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Labuskafni. 
Honorable Mtsube. Honorable Mtsube. No question. Honorable Mbanya. Mbanya. Uh, thanks, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, you'll, you'll bear me if ever I'm taking the department back because uh, I was uh, struggling. But I wanted to check that uh, I'm asking question on the right uh, presentation on the document that I've got it. Uh, the purpose of the meeting, Chair, it's a brief, it's a briefing by the both the Agriculture Research Council and the other port uh, biologic, biologically product facility on their mandate and activities, including any role that the intent is of playing in contributing towards the department and implementation of mitigation and adaptation strategies for agriculture as the country content with the changing environment pressure result from the climate change. Chair, if I'm right about uh, this document that I got in front of me, allow me, Chair, to, uh, to ask the possible question. I want to check with the ARC if there is any progress towards the building of the new food and mouth disease a vacancy manufacturing facility. If there's in any progress, can we get an update respond which reflect as the, as to when will the building the complete if no, why not? The second question, Chairperson, on OPP, I want to know that whether the OPP has any system in place to manage the vents, the, the vents supply. Sorry, Mam Gwenya. Mam Gwenya. Yes. Yeah, uh, the OBP, uh, they are still going to present. Okay. This is only the research council now. Okay. Thanks, ma'am. No, thanks, Chairperson. That's why I, I, I was wanting to check that I, am I doing the right thing because I was struggling to get in. Thanks, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Onzube is, Honorable Matibe. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and uh, greetings to the Deputy Minister, uh, the entities, as well as the honourable members. My first question was on funding. I'm, I'm partly covered by Honourable Smith. I, I, I just wanted to check uh, every department and entity, there is a slash uh, of uh, uh, the budget because of COVID, are uh, they affected uh, as well? And uh, how far are they affected? And how do they plan to mitigate um, in relation to, to that uh, uh, budget cut? The, 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 the other one, they, in their presentation, they've indicated the maize suitability decreasing, and uh, I couldn't hear how they plan to mitigate uh, to that if if there are any mitigation that they, they they think they can do the the other area that i want to check is uh, in relation to climate smart livestock production uh, in terms of the technology that they 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 have there uh, are the technology like that one, the infrared camera, uh, which assists in terms of identifying the cattle under heat stress, is it available for uh, small scale farmers uh, as well as farmers in, 
uh, in far flung uh, rural areas. The, 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 the last one, Chair Chaperson, is on the uh, agri cloud services. Uh, in terms of their presentation, they've indicated that it is available in six provinces. I couldn't hear which are those provinces where where uh, that uh, service is, uh, is available. But otherwise, uh, some of the questions I'm covered, and I, I think uh, indeed the ARC need uh, to assist us in terms of mitigating for climate change, as well as increase agricultural production in our country. Thank you very much, uh, Jefferson. Thank you, Chairperson. Are you still uh, around? Still around. I was oh, asking, uh, honorable members, any members who would like to pose any question before I give back to the Research Council? None. Should I, I give propose back to give to the Research Council chair so that we will move? We we'll move to another one, yes. Uh, CEO. And Doctor, thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair, and, and honourable members. Um, my team and I will try and answer the questions. Uh, I will see if I can uh, ask them to answer some of the questions, but I'll try and deal with those that I can deal with as quickly as uh, as possible. Um, the ARC before the uh, COVID nineteen uh, received a budget cut of 5% for the current financial year uh, for that uh, starting 1 April 2020. So already we had to factor in, in terms of our annual uh, plan, a cut uh, in, our, in our budget. And that had already been, be, been adjusted accordingly by the time the 1st of April uh, uh, started. Um, secondly, because uh, the ARC has been part and parcel of the essential services uh, that provides laboratory services. As you know, agriculture was declared an essential service, both for diagnostics, but also to enable the farmers to harvest effectively. Um, we continue to function at all the different lockdown uh, levels, even though we were at a slightly reduced uh, level. So um, uh, uh, we did not, received further budget cuts after the minister had presented the adjusted uh, budget uh, in, uh, in June, July. In terms of the question around the water planning, uh, you, know, uh, you know, and whether how the department and the ARC, uh, you know, how does that work in terms of enabling the departments to, to do their planning? We provide, as we indicated, the early <laughs> Hello. The pro Chairperson. Order. What is the point of order, honourable member? Hello. Yes. Honourable Arnold. Uh, I think you can continue. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Chair. Th thank you, Chair. In terms of the next question around uh, climate and water planning and the, the relationship with the department, what, as we indicated in the presentation, we collect all the weather data and we do weather predictions in respect of drought and so on. And we provide that information, not only to the national departments, but also to the provincial departments and uh, as and when the local departments and local uh, municipalities request, we also provide them that information. And as we indicated, we provide the information to the disaster management center as well. Uh, how they then decide on terms of their planning, it is really done by themselves, but we provide them the sufficient information and in, in a manner that they can easily understand and use it in terms of their, uh, their planning. Uh, and that also applies to the aspects around um, early uh, uh, warning systems. I think the slides, the, the example that we have shown you is the one on Rift Valley fever. 
that you know Red Valley fever is one of those uh, animal diseases that happens uh, usually when there's lots of rain and lots of water that tends to be standing around because there's been, it's been a very heavy rainy season. Now, uh, ordinarily you would have a vaccine for that. Uh, however, because we go through these cycles of drought periods and cycles of heavy rain uh, once every seven years, what ends up happening is that farmers usually do not vaccinate on an annual basis during the dry periods when there is a lot of drought over several years. Uh, so what we've tried to do now, which is work that we've been compiling over the last few years, is to actually to start to learn how to we can accurately predict the likelihood of the outbreak of Rift Valley fever well in advance of the next rainy season so that we can use that information to advise government and the farmers one, to prepare in terms of developing the right vaccine to be available in the right amounts at the right places at the right time once uh, uh, the rainy season starts. So that by the time the rainy season starts and the outbreak of the Rift Valley fever starts to come out, the farmers, farmers have vaccinated their, their, their animals. So that's really the kind of work that, that we do. We also do a similar kind of work in terms of the weather advisories to the uh, vineyards for the wine farmers and so on, to give them a picture of the state of affairs of the life of, of, the, of, the, of the condition of the vineyards and the likely implication of a possible disease such as leaf roll, leaf roll virus so that they can also spray the necessary pesticides on time. Uh, and some of that information we also provide to other farmers uh, that is contained in the agri cloud to indicate to them it's time for spraying and so on. So that's the kind of information that we, we provide. It's really mostly advisories based on a whole lot of information that is compiled uh, by a lot of different sources and historical data that we would have compiled as the organization. The question around whether the weather stations network, are they all in a functional state? The majority of them are functional. Uh, it is a challenge in terms of keeping them uh, fully functional at all times. We do have technicians that travel around the country to try and fix them, to try and service them. Uh, and as you know, some of these are in remote parts uh, and the challenge is the frequency with which we can get to them uh, with more than 500 uh, weather stations scattered around the country. Uh, that also requires traveling and so on. Uh, at the particular point in time, as we're speaking now, our teams are actually just about getting out there because as you know, during the lockdowns, most of the inter-provincial travel was not necessarily allowed. Therefore, most of our technicians could not travel uh, between provinces to see some of those. So uh, there's a lot of work that's going to be happening uh, starting now going forward for um, the rest of the year to monitor the condition of some of these particular uh, weather stations. Some of them do get vandalized uh, so it's not necessarily that they have not necessarily they have not been uh, serviced, uh, and that becomes a challenge for us as a, as an organization. As you know, some of the schools have been getting vandalized, and we do have some of this equipment on schoolyards uh, in different parts of the country. And I'm afraid it might be we don't have the exact number at the moment. Some of them might have actually been subjected to that uh, uh, to to that damage. There is a request for us to provide a lot more details. We can compile a report uh, around the work on um, uh, heat stress and its impact on, um, on, on livestock. We will submit a written report in this regard and the list of the kinds of pro projects and what specifically these projects are revealing in terms of the work that we do. We can do, do that um, afterwards. Uh, there is a question about OBP. I will leave that for OBP to respond to. The, the question around whether the provincial departments uh, and municipalities are sourcing vaccines uh, from the ARC and OBP, um, are we able to tell whether they are doing that? From our side as the ARC, we are not selling any vaccines, any specific uh, entity. Uh, we produce, we develop and produce uh, blood vaccines, which we then supply directly to OBP. OBP then 
uh, screens the necessary blood vaccines in the, 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 the material that we would have supplied to them, and then they package and sell. So I will leave that to OBP to respond on that particular uh, question. So we were unable to monitor whether the provinces uh, or the municipalities uh, where they source their, uh, uh, their, their their vaccines. Now there is a question around whether the ARC is still a leader uh, in the agriculture research uh, space uh, globally and in South Africa. We're still the largest single agriculture research institution, particularly on the applied side of of agriculture. Um, do we have a strategy to that effect? We have developed what we call the Agriculture Research Council of Vision 2050, uh, which is a strategy that is looking at responding to the agriculture needs, not only for now, but uh, as a vision towards attaining uh, you know, the, the key issues uh, by 2050. However, we would have done that not necessarily by 2050. It is our vision uh, that's looking towards that aspect. And it's looking at a variety of different research focus areas as they have been changing under the different landscape. But it is also looking at a variety of different ways around which we could achieve these particular areas. So um, if the honorable members would like to have a copy of this particular ARC Vision 2050, we would be more than happy to share with, with yourselves. We have actually consulted with a variety of uh, stakeholders in the agriculture sector before we finalize our ARC Vision 20, uh, 2050. Um, the question around whether the new project manager who is uh, driving our project are, uh, towards the process development and the actual architecture and, uh, and construction of, a, of the FMD vaccine factory, whether the project manager has been appointed and whether he has started at the Agriculture Research Council, the answer is yes, he has been appointed. He has started work in the Agriculture Research Council as at the beginning of, of August. He is very busy at work as we speak right now and has identified key areas already uh, around where to start and what are the key things that we, we now need to be able to do. Uh, and very soon he will be tabling to the board of the Agriculture Research Council a detailed project plan uh, that is going to help us monitor and drive the project as uh, possibly and as quickly as um, a, 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 as possible. In terms of the question around the, the uh, announcement that the ARC had issued to the staff around uh, voluntary surveillance packages, um, the, this was a, an announcement based on the fact that as we were engaging uh, all employees through organized labor and their representatives, uh, it is a legal requirement in terms of the Labor Relations Act uh, that we provide such a notice. Um, we have actually allowed uh, all our employees to access early retirement uh, in order for us to reduce the cost of employees uh, to the organization. And one of those that we had now started to do and we're planning to do, having consulted with all the employees, uh, is to provide a, an incentive within the context of voluntary severance uh, packages. Um, that negotiation is still ongoing. We are gathering all the, the details within that particular aspect together with various representatives of organized labor and other representatives of the other employees. The objective of what we are trying to do, A, is to reduce the cost of employees on the organization, so that the parliamentary grant, the majority of it could actually be used more towards research rather than to provide uh, salaries for the support staff, uh, so that we have a bigger impact or, on the agriculture sector and this, in the scientific solutions that we need to be developing as an organization. So that is still work in progress. We will continue to negotiate with as many uh, partners and employees as possible without actually adversely impacting on the livelihoods of employees of the Agriculture Research Council. The question around whether the department looks at what pollutes the, the, the water, the, there was a suggestion as to whether the Agriculture Research Council would look at the effect of municipalities' inability to manage sewage effectively and what impact this would have on agriculture. 
It's a research project suggestion. We would look into that and we would inform the, the, the committee uh, later as to how, whether that's a feasible project for us to conduct and, um, and explore how best we could um, explore the uh, possible uh, work in this particular uh, space. Um, the relationship uh, with the Department of Health, uh, how does that work? Do we have a relationship with the Department of Health? Do we share information? We do provide information to the Department of Health as and when they request. However, our primary relationship as a research organization is directly with the National Institute of Health Laboratory Services, uh, as well as with the Medical Research Council. We have a memorandum of agreement or a, a, of understanding with each of those two institutions where we collaborate on a number of, uh, of, of projects. For example, uh, we work with the Medical Research Council to understand the uh, medicinal properties of some of indigenous plants, such, including rooibos, um, uh, which is a project that we are currently conducting among others as a way of an, of an example. Um, we worked uh, previously, if you will recall, honorable members, there was an outbreak of listeria in the country. The Agriculture Research Council worked out around the clock uh, uh, quite for not quite a number of weeks and months uh, to collect samples in abattoirs, to collect samples on farms, to collect samples in a variety of different agriculture settings uh, of tissue samples, and we analyzed a number of these tissue samples for any possible contamination to determine as if they had uh, the uh, bacterium for listeria. We were then able, having done the genomic and genetic sequencing of these uh, samples, we were then able to share the data uh, with the NICD, which then helped them identify specifically the cause um, of listeria and where exactly it could have. Um, uh, okay, them. So we do share data, we do share information. We do provide some information as and when it is requested by the Department of Health, such as in issues dealing with the hemp and, and what could be uh, the criteria for growing hemp and developing new types of cultivars and how to manage that particular uh, plant, 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 plant species. Um, the progress on the FMD vaccine facility uh, the FMD vaccine facility had four stages to it. Uh, first of all, was around uh, developing the right technology uh, to produce the vaccine. The second part was developing the right set of skills uh, in the organization using the new technology for the production of this particular vaccine. The third stage was a looking at whether you could work beyond just the bench top, the laboratory scale, to scale up to a pilot level scale. And once you've scaled up to the pilot level scale, to go towards the design and construction of the uh, facility. I can tell you right now, we have successfully developed the technology, uh, which is a different technology that, was, that existed in, in 2005. Uh, which is now a, a, a suspension culture technology, uh, and it works for all the three types of foot and mouth that happen in South Africa or Southern Africa. We have uh, successfully recruited young South Africans and trained them. Uh, all 10 of them subsequently got honors degrees through Sefako, Sefako Mahatu University, and, uh, and we have re-employed them in the Agri Agriculture Research Council they are currently employed in that particular unit that is dealing with the technology around foot and mouth vaccine. We have successfully uh, piloted, developed the uh, production uh, system at pilot scales up to 20 liters at the moment. And out of that, we were able to produce 50,000 doses of each of the three different strains of foot and mouth vaccine. These are available, and we have continued since we produced this 50,000 doses of each of the different virus strains to test uh, clinically on different uh, livestock uh, uh, species uh, whether these uh, vaccines or these different strains, strains of the vaccine work uh, in terms of whether they provide immunity 
and for how long they provide the protection. We can safely at the moment clearly indicate that the strains that we now have produced are able to provide immunity to the livestock for a minimum period of nine months, uh, and it could be more. We are continuing to conduct those particular clinical studies. We're now at stage four, uh, which is the stage that's called process design and architectural design and construction. That is the stage at which this new project manager has now just started, and we would then be going through the process design. Process design effectively looked at, looks at the technology. It looks at how you scale up at a very large scale, and that's what then provides uh, information as to how you then design and architecturally your uh, fax, vaccine factory at a very large scale. Once we have that, we'll be able to provide a, a clear map as to when the actual uh, full construction would start and when it will um, finish. That's the work on the stage of the work that, you, that we are at. Uh, we have answered the question around um, a budget cuts. However, I think it is important you realize that the ARC does not only depend on the parliamentary grant. Part of the work that we conduct is paid for by the various uh, pharma organizations uh, and as part and parcel of matching with the parliamentary grant. As and when the various pharma organizations have not been functional under the lockdown in order for them to generate the statutory levies for them to pay for the research at the ARC, we realize, for example, that down the line, maybe uh, as at the end of, of September, we are not necessarily going to generate the revenue that we should be generating in order for us to deliver the services that we need to deliver as the Agriculture Research Council. For example, the wine industry uh, had not been functional under the, the, the three different lockdowns. That means they have not been able to generate income in order for them to pay for the work that the ARC is conducting on their behalf. That actually delays our ability to deliver on some of the projects. We are going to have to find a different way around which we mitigate that. One of those has been to delay the filling of some of the posts in order to ma manage our costs and our expenditure. We have reduced our expenditure accordingly as an organization in some of those particular uh, areas. There was a point that was made around the fact that um, climate change over the years re reflects that uh, there's, a, there's a reduced areas around which maize is suitable for growing because of reduced rainfall and, uh, and increased heat and drought. Uh, and the question was whether uh, there are any mitigations that we have put together. I think one of the slides that uh, my colleague presented is a slide that demonstrates the research that the ARC is conducting around developing drought tolerant maize varieties that actually grow in environments that are slightly drier and, and slightly with higher temperatures. So that even as the rainfall is reduced, you are able to produce the maize yields that you need to achieve uh, under those dry conditions. That's a very powerful mitigation strategy. And what's even more important is the fact that we're able to increase yields even under those drought conditions. And what we've also done is provide for the training and access of these particular uh, drought tolerant seeds to smallholder farmers in order for these smallholder farmers to try these particular drought tolerant maize cultivar seeds under their own conditions. And what we've learned is that quite a number of them have actually received, achieved higher yields than they currently have been achieving under the conventional maize um, uh, uh, systems. The question is whether the, the cameras and the technologies that we were demonstrating to conduct our analysis and our research on heat stress in livestock, are they available for smallholder farmers? Well, these are cameras that we would have um, purchased that are suitable primarily for us to conduct the research. What is more important is not necessarily the cameras, but us, for us to be able to provide the scientific solutions and the insights for the farmers to understand that when temperatures are at, are at a particular level, uh, different 
breeds of animals uh, would uh, withstand the heat at, in different ways, uh, and therefore they would need to manage these particular animals in different ways. So they don't necessarily need those particular cameras, but they need the information around them in order to make the farm management um, uh, decisions. The question around the AgriCloud, if you noticed in the slide, uh, the AgriCloud app is av available on the Google Store. It's an, on Android. If you're using an Android phone, uh, you can download that app uh, onto your phone. Uh, it is available wherever you are in South Africa. Uh, it is available for use in 11 South African languages. Che, I think I will try to answer all the questions unless my colleagues can remind me if uh, there is a particular question that I have missed. No, thank you very, oh, thank you very much, much. CEO, uh, for responding to questions. Uh, I think if members, they do have um, another questions, they will put in writing so that uh, we can give to OBP to present. I think we have uh, covered a lot of uh, questions, uh, CEO, CEO. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, thanks. Uh, now we are uh, members. If we have any question, you will put in writing and then we'll uh, process to the research council. I will now give this opportunity to o OBP to present. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you to uh, honourable uh, members who have been waiting to who are present in this meeting, and uh, honourable members, uh, Deputy Minister, and uh, colleagues, the DG, and other colleagues from the Department of Agriculture. I will be giving the presentation uh, from OBP, and I uh, will try to load it. Um, to the screen, um, if you bear with me. I hope you can see that. Is it visible? Yes, we can see. Yes, it is. Yes, we can see. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I will try to make sure that. Um, Yes, so uh, on the support biological product, uh, as you certainly know, is a, its mandate is exclusively to produce vaccines. Um, it's important to note that we are uh, in the same site as uh, the veterinary school, which you can see in this picture, and uh, the on the support veterinary research, which is part of the agriculture research. OBP is in the middle. Uh, the, the sole mandate of OBP is to produce, to develop and produce vaccines. Uh, we don't do diagnostic service. We don't um, uh, provide teaching to, to students, so exclusively vaccine. So our role in terms of um, climate uh, change will be exclusively on how we we, we come up with mitigations to, to, to improve the control of diseases for which we produce vaccine. I think from the ARC, it was uh, clear that the mandate is much more broader. They cover all sorts of uh, aspects of agriculture, and they also generate uh, climate information, which we, we use as uh, any other institution. So our, our role is very, very limited to how we can come up with solutions uh, due to climate change that will improve the control of diseases for which we have vaccines. So if we look at the, the broad changes that have been occurring that have an impact uh, on, 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 on livestock and, uh, uh, and, and uh, the, the, the disease that affects them, it's an aspect such as a severe drought, high temperature, no grazing land, and destructive floods. And this has been uh, seen in our country in terms of uh, uh, high environmental temperature, which affected grazing of livestock. 
longer drought period that have been seen in the coastal provinces like the Western Cape, Eastern Cape and Northern Cape and heavy rains which resulted in flooding uh, that was seen in Western Cape and KZN. And so such occurrence have, uh, were seen also during the winter season, which is quite uh, uh, abnormal. And then the extreme cold temperatures have also been experienced, which completely changed the situation under which um, the, the livestock uh, keepers usually come up with their health program to control diseases. And in some cases, we've been seeing two to three seasons instead of four. Uh, uh, Sometimes winter becoming less cold and, and becoming shorter, as we experience also this year. It is uh, starting to be warmer earlier, making spring to be shorter and, and uh, longer summer. So all this has an impact on, um, on the control of animal disease. Other changes have included change in uh, uh, South African provincial climate uh, uh, in provinces like the Northwest, Limpopo, which have experienced uh, rain, uh, better rain than uh, before. Uh, and and uh, other provinces uh, also in the country have, have been in the same situation. So if we, we, we look also in terms of the, the changes that have occurred in the farming systems, uh, farmers have been trying to adapt to, to to these changes, uh, but also to the demand in the market uh, to moving more into intensive farming and uh, less free ranging livestock, which become difficult to maintain due to change in climate. And also the, 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 the change toward gaming also had had a big impact also in uh, how um, extensive lands are utilized. So that, that has translated into a number of diseases uh, uh, having a different uh, occurrence and uh, uh, spread. Uh, we see more, for example, of uh, spore-forming diseases, which are bacterial diseases like your anthrax, black water, botulism, and swelled head. Uh, they are occurring uh, more in summer than they used to uh, in, in other seasons. We are seeing also more respiratory disease like pastorellosis, which uh, affect both sheep and cattle. They are occurring throughout the year due, the, due to extended high, heavy, uh, dusty wind also in summer. And uh, South Africa has a lot of vector-borne disease, and these uh, are occurring now even in winter uh, uh, due to unexpected winter rain and sudden rise in temperature. So if we look at the, 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 the longer, drier season, which are hot and dusty, they're impacting now on the form, as I mentioned, the spore forming diseases. And these are diseases like anthrax, black water, as I mentioned earlier, uh, more respiratory disease, pastorella, and vector borne disease, which are occurring more often, like heart water, uh, African horse sickness, and blue tongue. If we look at these maps, which uh, shows what has been known for decades, I think for more than 50 years or, or more, or 60, uh, we've been taught that uh, um, hard water occurs in the area where the, the vector, which is called amblyoma herbarum, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tick. It occurs in this uh, shaded part of the country. It's been uh, traditionally the case, and that's what uh, we've always uh, used to, to, to build control strategy. But if you look at um, the disease occurrence for last year, for example, uh, you will see these dots, these red dots. Uh, these are each rich red dot represent uh, outbreaks that occurred in the course of 2019. We're seeing more and more of these red dots going beyond the line uh, that has been the limit limited zone where the, the disease used to occur. So there's a spread toward the rest of the country and in area where there's a high density of animal therefore causing more problems uh, in, in, in animals that were never uh, affected by this disease, heart water. So the, 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 that has pushed, like I said earlier, the farmers to change the vaccinating uh, strategy. Uh, they are vaccinating, for example, against uh, bacterial disease uh, that I mentioned earlier, twice a year. Uh, they should be vaccinating twice a year to be able to control this disease. And this is for farmers that have the information. Those without information, they may not know that they need, they will be affected by this disease. 
Uh, vaccination for against vector-borne disease such as blue tongue, lumpy skin, African horse sickness during winter also have been occurring due to unexpected rain, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, tick population and ecology have changed. Uh, we're seeing most of these uh, blood uh, disease, uh, bacterial disease also spreading in new area where they used not to be. So OBP has been adapting to, to be able to address uh, these challenges that are occurring, which are unusual. And we're doing it in uh, a way that will take us to produce more vaccines, to have more vaccines available so that the farmer can, 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 can access it throughout the year instead of producing it just for specific seasons. So we, we, we're making sure that we have more vaccines available throughout the year. And uh, that requires also a lot of work in terms of um, improving our processes for production, uh, having bigger batch size, and those of you who are familiar with livestock, they will note that uh, the problem of product availability has decreased drastically at OBP. We don't make it easier for farmers to use one vaccination to cover a number of diseases. And these are new technology that we have here. We're working on more than 10 different vaccines. One shot, more than uh, two to three, up to five different vaccines uh, um, uh, used into the animal. And the same is applying also for our vector borne disease. We, we're developing different type of vaccines that are, are going to, to assist uh, in, in controlling disease that are occurring out of uh, season. And uh, it's also an opportunity to mention one uh, partnership that we're doing with the Agriculture Research Council, where we're developing the heart water, which is uh, the disease that I showed in the map that has been spreading into new area and the old vaccine hasn't been any more effective. And uh, this one that we're working with the ARC will, will, be, uh, will be able to cover the whole country in a much more effective way. And another area where we are uh, also uh, doing more to, especially if to cover a uh, small scale farmer who uh, usually don't always have the information in terms of increasing uh, uh, their, their access to, to products. We, 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 we have been working on, on things like uh, LT to make it possible for distributor to have products always available. Uh, we're expanding also our distribution network, uh, especially in, 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 in area that have been often neglected. And one of the strategy we're using is that we, we've noticed that there's a lot of animal health technicians that are, or, that are currently unemployed. And we started program to, 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 to develop entrepreneurs in the distribution uh, and other aspects of the value chain. We, we also uh, need to encourage farmers to invest more into farmer biosecurity system, which usually is not applied in, in uh, small scale farmers, but in big farms. But at least now uh, more and more of them are getting exposed to that. And we're also investing more into farmer training. Uh, uh, we, we, we trained more than, um, we're training more than 500 farmers uh, a year, uh, which we, we, we continue to, to, to maintain. Unfortunately, this year, we may have less because of the first quarter the fact that we had uh, a situation with uh, COVID. So these are the strategy that OBP is putting in place, uh, adapting to, 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 to the change in climate. And we, we, we will continue to do so as the climate change uh, impact is, is, is keep on uh, expanding as we saw in the previous uh, presentation. And we, we committed to be always uh, available to, 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 to work with uh, the farming community. So that was uh, the contribution from OBP and I thank you. Thank you, Che. Now, members, I give you to ask questions, but you must consider a time. Honorable members, it's your time. I'm going to start again with Honorable Arnold. Uh, no Honorable questions. Smith. Sir? 
No, I say I don't have any questions. Uh, I you think don't have any questions, Honorable yeah. Smith. Thanks. You have a question, Honorable Smith? Uh, yes, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, Honorable Plute, Honorable Bibi, Honorable Mukausa. No, Chair, I don't have any. Okay, thank you. Thank no, you. Honorable Lavosakni. Honorable Imelen Tube. Honorable Nguena and Honorable Matibo. I no questions. Chairperson, sorry. Honorable Tutu, I just want to say I'm covered by the presentation. Thank you. No question. Oh, good. Honorable Smith, you can continue. Honorable. Honourable um, Chair, yes, um, I've just got a quick question, you know, um, uh, uh, because I am from Limpopo where we had the outbreak of uh, foot and mouth disease. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know at that specific uh, time when, when the outbreak took place, uh, there were not uh, a sufficient number, uh, amount of uh, vaccines available. Um, uh, to uh, to handle the situation, so there were a rush to quickly sort that out. Uh, if I can just get some clarity on why was that uh, and and what was the situation behind that, uh, specifically from from the research. Um, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Honourable Chairperson of the committee, I'm covered. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Honorable Laboskarni. Honorable Kathy. Laboskarni. Kavak. No. Chair. No. Thank you very much, Honorable Labo. Honorable Ntume. Honorable Ntume, thank you very much. Honorable Ngwenya. Thanks. You have a question. I remember you have a question, Honorable Ngwenya. I don't have a question. Hello? Yes, Honorable Ngwenya. No, Chair, I um, don't have a question. Oh, you are covered because previously you had the, the question. Uh, Honorable Matibe. I'm, I'm covered, uh, Jefferson. I'm covered. <clears throat> okay, let me give back to uh, the CEO to present uh, to answer the question from Honorable Smith. Thank you, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for um, um, the question. Uh, since we have one question, um, uh, uh, I would probably partly respond to it because um, it's important to note that OBP uh, doesn't produce the foot and mouth vaccine. Um, the, the, we heard from uh, Dr. Moipuli that the ARC has the facility for FMD vaccine production. Uh, so we do not produce, but um, we, we, we have been involved in the distribution of the vaccine that is in, imported from Botswana while we um, the, 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 the ARC vaccine um, uh, will be make, becoming available um, as before. So um, our role in FMD is really very, very limited. We, we're not into the production of this vaccine. We don't have the type of facility to produce uh, an FMD vaccine like uh, the ARC. I don't know that Dr. Moipuli want to add to that. Chair, I think um, the circumstances in respect of distribution of the vaccine that's purchased from Botswana is best responded to by the department because uh, they are the ones responsible for distribution of vaccines uh, uh, in the in the area, particularly in Lipopo. Thank you. No, thank you very much, uh, CEO and doctor. I think uh, members uh, are satisfied if they are not satisfied, 
they will uh, write the questions back to you. And let me take this opportunity to thank both uh, OBP and ARC to come and present uh, to the committee. All along, we were not aware of your mandate. Now today, we are satisfied we know uh, your, your mandate. So thank you very much for presenting for, for, to us as the committee. We really appreciated um, your presentation. Keep it always when we call you, you must come. Oh, by the way, uh, the deputy minister is still, uh, is still there. Deputy minister, are you still there? Before I can conclude. No, Chair, I don't think he's on the platform okay. anymore. Oh, Dizzy? Dizzy? Dizzy from the department? Madam Chair, thank you very much. You are welcome to conclude. Thank you. Okay. And uh, in my conclusion, DG, uh, I'm still waiting for the presentation on agriparks. I requested them uh, because during this period of uh, when we, while we are on the recess, I went to check the agri-parks, the, particularly in the province. Now I want to match it with uh, the presentation. So can you please kindly send back to me, to the, uh, to the committee, so that when I, I share with the committee, I must be able to check the presentation and tell the committee what I've seen during the constituency period, uh, DG. I hope uh, it's fine you in order to do that. Uh, let me say thank you very much, DG and Deputy Minister, uh, to come here with the entities that they uh, presented to us. In future, we will be able to understand or we will be knowing that what is the mandate of these um, uh, entities? We've been hearing about them, but we didn't know their mandate. Now today we are capacitated. We are uh, know their their mandate. So I'm not going to waste any time. Um, uh, Aska, I'll send my conclusion remarks to you because I know my network is going to cut at any time. I'm going to send you to you. We'll discuss uh, when we adopt the, the minutes next time. Thank you very much, uh, the department and the entities. You are released, and then the members of the committee must remain for a few minutes so that we can conclude the business of our committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chair. Without wasting any time, members are tired. Uh, they, some, they have another meeting to attend. The only, the only thing is the minutes of the 28th of July. That's the only thing we need to adopt. So far, we have a quorum. Okay. Members, did you receive the, the minutes of the 28th of July on time? Yes, we did, Chair. And... Uh, I put yes, in front of the committee the minutes of the 28th of July for adoption. I, I moved, Chairperson. Honorable Matibe moved. Any second? I second. I second, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Nguenya. Seconded the minutes. Any, anything, uh, Aska, that we left with? 
Thank you, Chair. Chair, I just want to ask if we can, at one other stage, just get an update from ASCA. According to our strategic plan that we had in the beginning of the year, the yes, things that we've decided that we're going to do, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of oversight work into it that we couldn't do in the current mm -hmm. year, and what the situation now is, and if we can maybe, or how we should go forward. Uh, to still uh, keep with that plan that we've made or came to come to a decision at the strategic session. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Laboska. Knika, with your advice, it is very important. Yes, Honorable Mam Kausa. Chairperson, I think we, we, we made a request previously for ASCA if there's any possibility of moving from this platform of Microsoft Teams <laughs> to, to Zoom. Because honestly, it disadvantages <laughs> some of us. Our <laughs> our equipments are keeps on throwing us out when we are <laughs> on this platform. So okay. I don't know if, if there's a possibility that we can start moving towards that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Mam Kause. And indeed, this uh, Microsoft uh, team is giving us a problem. Chairperson. Uh, yes, thank you. I just also want to raise the issue issue about uh, legislation, uh, and I think it's part of what uh, Honorable Abuskakni is asking regarding uh, our strategic plan. I know we are supposed to um, have looked into some legislation in this committee. Um, so if maybe if, if Asuka can at some point, not today necessarily, just give us uh, some feedback on where the legislation uh, process is and when we will uh, attend to the next pieces of legislation. Thank you. Okay, Honorable Dute. Thank you. Asuka, uh, members, they requested uh, uh, the issue of Microsoft team and then Honorable Blute asked uh, about the, the legislation, but not uh, uh, according to his question you are saying in future. He was not uh, referring to today. You can answer it after you check all the legislation that we have done and the, the coming one that are coming uh, for committee. No problem, Chair. I'll send the report and I'll write something up and send it to everybody. So, what happened about the Microsoft team? I did put that request to the, to the management of committee section. Mm. It's, it's, I don't know how it works, Chair. It it's all goes according to um, the availability of codes for, for, for Zoom and for MS Teams. So, it's all about allocation. I, I don't do the allocations, so I wouldn't, but I've done the request and I'll put in another request, but it just it goes according to how they're allocated. There are more um, license uh, codes for MS Teams than there is for Zoom. And okay. Zoom, is, I think, is prioritized for the houses, for plenary sessions. That's what I'm understanding. Okay. No, thanks. Uh, I will request again members of the committee. In our committee, we have whips, uh, we have chairpersons. So in our meetings, chairpersons meeting, in the whips meeting, can you raise the issue of uh, Microsoft team so that we can assist uh, Mr. Bauer? Uh, chairperson, just if maybe, if, if I may, through yes, your committee. Yes, ma'am. Maybe we need to look at, uh, maybe if we, we look at our, our meeting schedules as well, it is because majority of the meetings that we attend, including the house city, are on Zoom. Maybe if we just change our strategy, the time of our meetings and date of our meetings, see if we can't fit into the scheduling of Zoom. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Mukause. Although the issue of shifting, changing the date and so on, is going to be impossible for us because uh, all members that are here, 
they are attending another committee. We are scattered, uh, scattered to other committees. I think I've got five committees that I'm attending. So we prioritize to stay for our meetings. But your point is noted, Honorable Mkause. Ma'am, uh, Labo Skafni, you were saying something? No, Chair, I, would, I just want to propose that we take up the issue of the Zoom versus Microsoft. You on the uh, chair of chair, or the meeting that the chair have with the chairpersons and me on the WIPS forum. Because I do think that he um, uh, enjoys priority for you and so on. But I also know that Parliament's bandwidth is updated to such an extent that both streams can actually run on Zoom. And we have to find out why it's not being done. Thank you. Thank you very much, mm. members. Members, uh, let me take this opportunity to thank everybody who attended this meeting and his or her participation. We we are very you are very important to this committee. I thank you for making time to attend it. No matter you have been in the meeting for the whole morning until now, and I know other members we are going to another meetings. So it is not, it is beyond our control, but next time I think it will be fine. Thank you very much. This meeting is officially closed. It's officially Thank you, Chair. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you, Chair. Bye-bye. Have, have a lovely evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.